गुड डे एंड वेलकम टू टीटागर रेल सिस्टम लिमिटेड क्यू टू एफ वाई ट्वेंटी फोर कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल होस्टेड बाई एन टी स्टॉक ब्रोकिंग एज अ रिमाइंडर ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट लाइन्स विल बी इन द लिसन ओनली मोड एंड देर विल बी एन अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर यू टू आस्क क्वेश्चन आफ्टर द प्रेजेंटेशन कंक्लूड्स शुड यू नीड असिस्टेंस ड्यूरिंग दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल प्लीज सिग्नल एन ऑपरेटर बाई प्रेसिंग स्टार देन जीरो ऑन योर टच टोन फोन Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Dhirendra Tiwari from Antiques Shop Broking. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Tiwari. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Antiques Shop Broking, I welcome you to Tokyo FY24 Post Regional Conference Call of Tatagar Rail Systems Limited. We are very glad to have with us today, uh, Mr. Umesh Chaudhary, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Pratish Chaudhary, Director Marketing and Business Development, Mr. Uh, Anil Agrawal, Director Finance, CFO and CBRO, and Mr. Saurav Singhania, Joint CFO and Group Financial Controller. I would like to congratulate uh, the entire team of Titagat Rail Systems for reporting yet another quarter of very strong performance. Now I would invite uh, Mr. Umesh Chaudhary for uh, his initial remarks on the results and outlook. Over to you, Umesh. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dhirendra uh, ji, and thank you for uh, uh, hosting this uh, earnings conference call. Uh, uh, Antique is holding uh, hosting this call for the first time, so uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, have you uh, host the call. uh very good afternoon to all the participants uh, and uh, thank you for joining the call uh, the quarter has been uh, i would say in line with what we have been expecting uh, i had mentioned earlier also that uh, we would be maintaining uh, for the first uh, uh, couple of quarters or two three quarters uh, a run rate of similar nature which we have done uh, as far as the uh, you know the two businesses are concerned the uh, freight rolling stock and the passenger rail system so as far as freight, freight rolling stock is uh, concerned uh, the performance has been in line with what we had uh, expected uh, although we have been able to touch in a particular month uh, about 750 wag 760 wagons 759 wagons uh, output and has been disclosed in our presentation uh, we are very well on track to touch the 1000 wagon mark by the end of uh, this fiscal the order book remains strong and uh, uh, the railways growth trajectory also looks strong so we believe that there should be uh, good traction for the freight rolling stock uh, business or freight uh, wagon business in the years to come uh as far as the passenger uh, rail system is concerned uh, the quarter was very interesting because we bagged two new important contracts one for surat and one for amdabad and uh, after the pune metro contract while the company had got the bangalore contract uh, by way of uh, subcontracting from crrc these two tenders are the first direct tenders that we have received Uh, from the uh, metro authorities in india that is uh, that makes these two contracts very significant so what is also significant that is that is these are the two direct stainless steel contracts uh, stainless steel car body contracts that we have received from uh, a metro authority the pune contract we had was for aluminium coaches so this kind of uh, establishes theta girls forte uh, to both aluminium and stainless steel metro coach manufacturing this combined with the vande bharat order would uh, gives a very good visibility very strong visibility to our passenger rail systems business and uh, all our energies and all our focus now is on the uh, execution of the contracts that we have got here uh, we believe uh, we are confident of starting the stainless steel manufacturing for the uh, bangalore metro project within uh, december this year so in about a uh, couple of months we'll start production and the first 
metro coach should be dispatched within this financial year for bangalore metro uh, so it is uh, the stainless steel line setup is very well in track uh, quick update on the vande bharat uh, vande bharat project is also going very well on track uh, we have already uh, progressed on the designing uh, activity uh, the train is coming out very well it would be in line with the expectations of the government and the people of india and we expect to be able to offer to the uh, people of india a very modern and a very uh, unique uh, train travel experience by the new sleeper vande bharat that we will be uh, will be uh, launching or will be offering to the uh, railways uh, as far as ship building we we had a launch of the first uh, driving support craft uh, of course the ship building has been now merged into the freight uh, rolling stock business but uh, that is also a significant development because uh, uh, for the navy this was one of a kind of vessels that we have uh, that they have been able to get from an indian source under the make in india uh, policy of the government so on the whole uh, i would say that it's been a satisfying quarter uh, pretty much in line with what our internal expectations were uh, going forward uh, we believe that uh, we will continue the thrust on growing the capacity of uh, the production and the output of the freight wagons and uh, the passenger uh, rail systems uh, alike uh, we believe that the passenger rail systems uh, have a much longer runway uh in terms of the potential that from where we are to where we have to go uh, there is a very, very long runway so just a quick update about pune metro also pune metro we have almost completed 60 70% of the contract and the rest would be completed within this financial year uh with these few words i would uh, uh be very happy to answer any questions that may be there from the participants thank you Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Kaushik Mohan from Anshika Institute. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, Mr. Mohan. Good afternoon. Hi, sir. Hi, sir. Congratulations for the great set of numbers. Uh, sir, uh, my first major uh, question is on the raw materials uh, consumed. Uh, if we see, we have uh, uh, shown that our raw material cost is somewhere around uh, six thousand. as uh, so 679.6 crores so can i understand uh, basically why are we having uh, such a low raw material cost because of one impact on the raw material our gross margins are increased from 21.8 percentage to 22.9 percentage the gross margin in our business is a function of the type of wagon that we are producing uh when the mix of the private wagon goes up the contribution percentage is improved in the current quarter the share of the private sector wagon has been slightly higher than earlier quarters and that is the result that the gross margin percentages are better having said that uh, because of the volumes because of the efficiencies etc uh, we have been able to uh, as is reflective from the last uh several quarters that we have reported we have been able to upscale our uh, expected debita margins but in this quarter the uh the margins have been even better because of the uh, mix of the private versus the uh, railway execution so so can we expect the blended margin to be upwards of 12 percentage on the ebitda level So the whole we have always maintained uh, earlier we had maintained uh, uh, a margin guidance in the freight rolling stock for 
8 to 10 percent. In the last call, I had mentioned that because of the various steps that have been taken, we would be able to be on the higher end of the spectrum, which is say about 10, 11 percent or so. On a sustained basis, uh, and I'm not talking about a quarter to quarter, but I, and I'm not also talking about three or four quarters, but on a sustained basis, let's say over an eight quarter period, the normal margin of the industry should be considered as 11, maybe going up to 11 and a half percent. But uh, this is this is uh, on a much longer uh, horizon. As far as the shorter horizon is concerned, depending upon the product mix, the margins can be up and down. Sure, thanks, sir. And in our presentation, page number three in business update, we have mentioned that uh, vegans ka private players is consuming around uh, contributing around 26 percentage of uh, FTRS. Uh, that means, am I right to assume that 3,500 3, crores is coming from private players? That's the order book uh, for the private yes, order book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm right with assuming that number. I, I'm, I don't have the calculation with me, but yes, I mean, uh, you can definitely do that calculation and I'm sure it will be right. Okay, okay. Uh, thanks, sir. And uh, last and final question. I just wanted to understand, uh, we have in the page 14, we have told about that uh, we, are late, uh, we are having a leadership position with 32% uh, 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 market share. Can, I, uh, can, we, can you please explain that how this number is being arrived at? Sure. Uh, Mr. Anil Agarwal, Director of the So these numbers are taken from the source uh, of the mentioned. So this is based on the total number of items that has been dispatched in the respective years for 2021, 22, and 23. So that's how the number has been worked out and been presented over uh, here. Sorry to interrupt. So you're, you're, there's a distortion at your end. Um, you're not audible enough. Sorry. Is it, is, it, is it better right now? Yes, yes sir, it's better. better. Yeah, yeah. So, so we've given the source as Indian Railways. Uh, uh, it's in the Indian Railways network, uh, I mean, the domain which is given. And these numbers have been worked out based on the total number of wagons that has been dispatched in the year 2021, 22, and 23. Order, sorry. Got it, got it, got it, sir. Yeah. So that means that whatever the go Indian government has uh, given as an order, uh, that yeah, number yeah. Ka 32% is that. That's a percentage, yes. Okay, oh, perfect. Got it, sir. Then, and last and final question: How is our uh, development on the wheel set uh, planned? So that that's also on the track, actually. You know, um, uh, so the ordering for the main equipment has already been done. Then uh, uh, the land land uh, we have already been uh, already decided. So everything is on track. Okay. So, so by Q2, uh, sorry, by Q3 or Q4 of FY22, can we expect the plan to be live? Actually, actually, you know, the first week it has to be dispatched um, uh, three years from the signing of the contract. So, um, uh, what what we expect to do is that we should be able to uh, gen uh, produce the wheel shape before that and offer offer for inspection to the Indian railway. That's our plan, and uh, we are on track of. Okay, right, perfect. Sir. Thanks, sir. thanks. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question is from the line of Nikhil Abhyankar from ICICI Securities. Please proceed. Mm, so, thank you, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Please go ahead, Mr. Bianca. Hello. So one moment. Ma'am, nothing is audible. Line for the participant has dropped. We'll move on to the next person, uh, participant in the queue, question queue. Uh, the next question is from Sudeep Anand. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, and many congratulations for the very good set of numbers. Uh, so just wanted to uh, understand how should we look at the margins in your PRS, which is uh, ranging between 2 to 3% or in fact, it is 3 percent around. Uh, so once our capacity goes up to 70 cars per month, what kind of a margin improvement we can start in? 
Sure. So the current uh, margins of the PRS is not reflective of the business margins because of the low volume. The fixed costs remain the same. The margins get impacted. Uh, we uh, had mentioned that uh, uh, an approximate margin of 10% in this business is expected at normal margins, at normal uh, volumes. Normal volumes would mean about 20 cards, 50 to 20 cards per month for the current, for the phase one of the production cycle. We expect that by uh, middle of the next financial year, we should be able to achieve that uh, run rate. Uh, and uh, be able to get to the normal margin. The margin improvement in this business will happen once we are able to backward integrate with the propulsion and the components, which is uh, uh, which is what we are intending to do and which is what we have already on track. We have already set the ball rolling. That should take us another maybe two years, two and a half years, or let's say between two and three years, uh, we will be able to backward integrate and we are working on different strategies to be able to uh, become self-sufficient or Atmanirbhar on the propulsion side. And that will give us uh, a substantive uh, margin uh, boost. So to answer your question, uh, by middle of next financial year, we should be able to reach uh, a base level of volume, which will give us an, uh, uh, an EBITDA margin of around 10%. And thereafter, in about two, two and a half years, uh, we should be able to, once we are able to get the backward integration piece in place, be able to improve this margin even further. Okay, thank you. And so just one last thing. Uh, so looking at our uh, order book, uh, Internet has recently floated a tender for 20,000 wagons. So how are we placed to actually bid for the for the maximum number of uh, wagons? So looking at the uh, current order book, how are we placed, sir? We are very well placed. We would definitely be participating uh, in a very meaningful manner in this tender. The deliveries required in this tender are stretching up to end of 2025, December 25, uh, which uh, in case the tender is finalized, uh, everything goes well, uh, then it's December 2025, otherwise it may be extended, which leaves us almost 23 months. Uh, or oh, sorry, uh, 27 months, uh, 23 months uh, from now, and uh, we have enough capacity available with us to be able to participate in a very meaningful manner in this manner. Thank you, Thank you so much. Sir. That's it for much. Sir. All the best. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question is from Nikhil Abhyankar from ICIC Securities. Please sir, proceed I'm with a, the question. Sir, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, you are, Mr. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, can you just give us the breakup between private and government wagons that we have uh, dispatched in Q2? Uh, the revenue breakup, basically. As, as a matter of uh, policy for competitive reasons, we do not give that. But uh, the percentage of the wagon dispatched to private sector has been better compared to earlier quarters. Okay. Okay, sir. And sir, we were expecting a larger tender from railways, right? Somewhere around forty to 50,000 of wagons. So are we expecting some other tender coming up? Uh, well, our information is as good as yours in terms of uh, newspaper reports. Uh, and according to whatever we understand from those, the total demand is not over by this tender that has been issued. This is only for one type of wagon. The other types of wagons that are required are yet to be tendered, and we are hoping that the tender should come out in due course. Understood. And sir, uh, so there was a moratorium on GPWS wagons uh, in March. So out of out of the sanctioned lot, so how much is still remaining for delivery or for ordering or something like that? Can you give a, some highlight on that? Uh, there are enough uh, approvals that are already active for the GPWIS, and uh, uh, we believe that the moratorium will, by the time the moratorium is there, the pipeline will not get dried up. I do not have the exact numbers with me to be able to comment upon that, but uh, in terms of the traction and the order pipeline, uh, the GPWIS wagons have a very strong pipeline uh, and traction both. Uh, 
sir, can you just give us the uh, the exact number? How much has been sanctioned till date? That's what I said. I don't have the exact numbers okay. with okay. me as well. Okay, sir. Okay, no problem. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Srinidhi from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Srinidhi. Yes. Good afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good afternoon. Congratulations on great set of numbers. So building on to this private wagon demand, uh, which continues to be very strong and is very well reflected in your number. Wondering, sir, apart from this GPWIS uh, moratorium, are there other factors which is driving this strong demand from private market? The overall buoyancy in the economy is, is uh, driving the wagon market. Uh, wagon is a very uh, attractive investment in terms of the return on investment or return on capital employed for any investment made into purchase of wagon is very attractive. And uh, obviously, you know, the users, uh, when they the business, the base volume of the business is good, like it is for the different core sectors. They are investing into assets that can give them a better return. So uh, the moratorium uh, actually has nothing to do with the buoyancy in the market. Uh, the moratorium was put because of different reasons. But uh, we believe that the traction in the wagon market or the private wagon, whether it is in GPWIS, whether it is in the container train operator scheme. We've also seen a lot of traction on the container train operator scheme. We've seen a lot of traction on the steel plants buying wagons for their own use. Uh, of course, for the mining and uh, power and all of that. So, on the whole, the private sector wagon uh, has seen a good traction. The uh, one, one factor that can be attributed is the more... Uh, uh, I would say, uh, user-friendly approach of the railways towards investment into wagons, which has uh, encouraged private sector to continue their investment in buying wagons. Right, sir. So good to hear. Uh, second question I have, sir, uh, uh, is on the uh, potential new entrants in the wagon industry. We saw that industry almost doubling or even more than that in just a couple of years. So are you seeing new players entering in this uh, wagon manufacturing industry? And can you also take us how long is the approval process for a new entrant to come in this industry? So we've not heard of any new entrant apart from the ones that were already existing that are uh, entering into the industry as of this moment. But of course, it's an open industry and people can enter. The normal cycle time for a new entrant to get established and come to the regular uh, bidding and re regular order taking cycle because it's also a safety product and we run the railways on a mixed track. So as a result of that, uh, normally what we have seen is anything between three to seven, uh, three to five, six years. And uh, if you look at the last two or three entrants, they took at least two, three years, for three to five years, I would say for being able to establish themselves as a regular manufacturer. Right. And last one, if I may, uh, on the receivables, sir, we saw uh, receivables increasing uh, the, from March levels. Wondering what is really driving that and, and what level one can expect that these stabi uh, stabilize by the year end? This is a temporary phenomenon because of the sales were back-ended in the quarter towards the uh, end of the quarter. And also the the mixed change between private and the railways. Uh, normally the payment terms are uh, maybe just a couple of weeks more in the uh, in the private sector uh, segment. So uh, this is a temporary phenomenon. As far as the working capital cycle is concerned, we are more than confident that we will be able to maintain our targeted working capital cycle of uh, net working capital days of under 30 days as far as the uh, rate. Uh, rolling stock is concerned. Thank you, sir. All the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from Pala Subramanian from Arihant Capital. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Congratulations for good set of numbers. Uh, sir, I have seen uh, in that railway's data, I think railway volumes have been declined uh, not only Tita Kair, other competitor players also. Uh, like uh, uh, pri private wagons volumes have been uh, increased. I just want to understand, like, uh, 
these private uh, volumes or export ma markets or uh, domestic markets we have supplied and if you could talk about what kind of export opportunities we have any new order pipelines and any uh, about uh, about inquiry status on that exports market so the private pipelines primarily are domestic demand and indirectly they are going to the railways only because they operate they are operated by the indian railways it is the procurement channel that becomes through the private sector and uh, the usage is of the private sector uh, which in any case even if the railway buys the ultimate customer is the private sector or the core sector uh, as far as export is concerned you know barring sporadic uh, wagon exports uh, to neighboring countries or to some african countries india is not or there is not a huge export market for the complete wagon per se uh, the reason being the logistics cost and just to give a comparison a wagon that costs maybe about 40 lakh rupees uh, uh, kind of occupies the same shipping volume compared to a coach which costs about uh, 10 crore rupees so the shipping cost as a percentage of the capital cost in a wagon becomes very high as a result of which uh, wagon is a more localized domesticated industry and uh, domesticized industry so he not domesticated but uh, uh, but there are sporadic uh, demands that keep on coming up for wagons and uh, as a company we have also exported wagons to neighboring countries and to some african countries okay sir uh, sir could you please share uh, volume numbers for uh, freight and passenger rolling stocks for this quarter it is already given in the segment sir you don't give na break up between private and general passenger and freight your question sorry is freight and passenger volume sir yeah. overall volume it given the freight and the passenger is the technical uh, report Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. That's it for me, sir. Thank you. The next question is from Sherom Kapoor from Prabhu Das Lila Dar. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congrats on your great set of numbers. So, sir, I had a couple of questions. One is on uh, metro. So, in your presentation, you mentioned that. Sorry, we can't hear you, Mr. Kapoor. Sorry, sir. The line for the participant dropped. Uh, we'll move on to the next participant uh, from the name of Kunal Sheth. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, my question is pertaining to the passenger rail segment. You did mention about the, you know, backward integration could lead to further improvement in margins. uh so uh, if you can you know just talk us through about uh, you know what are the timelines that you are keeping in mind in terms of what is usually the timeline that it takes you know for some of these uh, you know products to get backward integrated as in you know put up a line approval process are there any major approval process that are you know required to be in place Sure. Uh, yeah, but after that, so uh, as far as the bulk of the backward integration margin, which is already on track, is the propulsion system, mm. and uh, we have already set up our facility for the propulsion system. For some of the propulsion system, we have also received approvals. For example, the traction motors, etc. But then they have to go through a very uh, stringent uh, trial process. and uh, some of the other like the metro propulsion they are still uh, on uh, way to develop those uh, systems uh, by way of our own engineering setup and we are also exploring uh, some uh, technology dyaps etc so uh, all in all told we believe for the propulsion system that we are now uh, uh, wanting to inject backward integrate at the first stage we will be able to get this uh, on track as i said between 2 to 3 years from now wherein we expect that we will be able to utilize our own propulsion system for the metro coaches manufactured by us sure. 
Uh, and for uh, other products that you were, you know, planning to backward integrate, any timelines and approvals uh, on that one? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. So apart from proportion systems, uh, uh, we uh, some of the any other products that we are looking to backward integrate and any timelines and approval process that we will have to go through in those products. Yeah, so those those processes are already ongoing. Some of them have already happened. Some of them will continue to happen. And the, the timeline that I'm mentioning is including those approval processes. Sure. Okay. Great, sir. Thank you so much and best of luck for the future part. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from uh, the line of Hemant, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, sir, congratulations on a very good set of, set of numbers, and thank you for providing me the opportunity. Sir, first of all, uh, I would like to know, like, out, out of the total order book of nearly 28,000 crores, what is the share of uh, Tetagar? Uh, because uh, as I understand, like uh, we have the 51 or 52 percent share with the with rail and uh, 50 percent the RK forging also, right? So out of the total order book, what is the share, uh, actual share of, uh, of our company? Good afternoon, Mr. Heyman. The order book reported is only considering our share of the order. So wherever the share of Itagar is, uh, say, 51 percent, the order book of 28,000 crore is considering 51% of that particular order. So 28,000 odd crore that has been reported is our share of the order book. And sir, uh, one more thing I wanted to ask you is, uh, like we are planning to ramp up our production facility, right? From 20 coaches to 70 coaches per month and 700 wagons, 1,000 wagons per month. So what is the timeline for, for the completion of the phase? As far as the freight wagon ramp up is concerned, as I had mentioned at the beginning of the call, uh, we will be able to achieve that by the end of this financial year. As far as getting the capacity to 70 cars per month is concerned for the passenger coaches, it is going to take us about three years, three and a half years from now to be able to reach that full capacity. Uh, and sir, uh, when will our uh, post production start? The joint project, we have the taxes for this. Hello, Mr. Hemant. Uh, you are not audible enough. Uh, uh, sir, I wanted to ask you, like, uh, when is the commencement of the fourth wheel production? The joint venture with uh, the fourth wheel, uh, according to the contract, is supposed to start before uh, April 2026. And we believe we will be able to be ahead of that. Sir, uh, any uh, revenue guidance for the next year? No, we do not give as a matter of policy any revenue or uh, any other guidance. Any, any broad range of the book and uh, uh, the, the, uh, the outlook of the company. Okay, okay. thank you. Sorry to interrupt, uh, Mr. Hemant, you can come back in the question queue. Yeah, yeah. Additional questions. I'm going with it, ma'am. Okay. The next question is from Viren Deshpande from Alpha Peak Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Sir, uh, good afternoon and congratulations on the excellent uh, numbers we have been uh, able to uh, do in this quarter as well as the first quarter. So, uh, do we expect the half, uh, second half of the year to be um, uh, significantly better than the first half because our ramp up of wagons, etc., will continue. Good afternoon, Mr. Deshpande. As far as the uh, the ongoing quarters, as I mentioned, that we would be around uh, similar levels as far as the freight uh, rolling stock and the passenger rolling stock is concerned. Uh, wherein the ramp up for the freight rolling stock will start happening in the end of the uh, of the current fiscal. So we will really take the advantage or see the advantage of that coming in the next financial year. As far as the passenger uh, rolling stock is concerned, we are now in the process of finishing the execution for the Pune Metro and uh, we will start Bangalore Metro. So there may be a few uh, quarters where uh, uh, before we are able to, maybe two, three quarters before we are able to ramp up the capacity to the desired level of 15 to 20 cars per month. 
and um, um, this uh, the contract with railways etc which we are having with uh, the major contract are uh, basically the earlier experience few years back was that the government contracts normally um, get delayed inordinately or the payment terms are not quite good so what is the experience uh, from this, uh, this uh, uh, new government has come in and the new orders which we have secured so is the experience far better than the earlier uh, uh, few years sir uh, well the, the working of the government is significantly better in the current government in terms of decision making in terms of execution uh, in terms of uh, overall planning i have said that uh, knock on wood uh, in our industry the orders which are placed because these are capital goods uh they are all against uh, sanctioned budgets so we have never in the last 26 years of our history had problems of the nature that you just mentioned in our industry and we hope that this never happen in the future also so we are getting good terms for the payments etc also on time they are contractual terms i would not call them good or bad but the, the payments are made within the contractual terms And the last question is regarding how much capex do we plan this year, and do we need to raise any funds for that purpose? We had already announced the uh, capex at the beginning of the fiscal uh, that we would be investing about six to seven hundred crores uh, overall. And uh, uh, as of now, there is no uh, plan uh, to raise any capital. As and when if there is something, we definitely we will come back to the market with it. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bala Subramanian from Arihant Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, sir, the private vacant side, how much uh, uh, advance mobilization we are getting? Uh, different contracts have different uh, advance clauses. It is not be possible for us for competitive reasons to. we can uh, definitive terms of uh, different contracts but uh, different contracts have different uh, payment conditions than different contractual conditions and these are not one uh, orders these are several orders uh, that we keep on getting from the private customers sir based on historical data any uh, range uh, in terms in percentage terms 5% 10% from 0 to 50% Okay, sir. We have zero percent advance, and we have seen contracts with fifty percent advance. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, I am unable to get the volume data. So in September, September month, we have dispatched seven fifty nine vacants. Uh, we can, uh, uh, like, we can assume in that range only. We can able to uh, another two months also, July and August, seven hundred and the vacants on the right side. I'm sorry, I am not able to understand. Okay, your in question. September month, we have dispatched seven fifty nine vacants. Uh, is that fair to assume July and August seven hundred vacants in that range on the right side? So I uh, we given the peak production that we have achieved, we would not be able to discuss for the monthly production data. As far as the total or uh, overall quarterly performance is concerned, uh, it has been as I, as we mentioned in line with our expectation. Uh, we believe that we will be able to maintain an average run rate between six to seven hundred wagons uh, per month, uh, uh, and gradually ramp it up to reach a thousand wagons run rate per month uh, by the end of this financial year. Okay, got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Devrat Mohata from Capital Group. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, I can, am I audible? Yes, sir. You're audible. Hi, Vasi. Congratulations on good results. Uh, I do have one question uh, on the cash flow section. There's been a build-up in uh, receivables. Can you just talk to what's happened there? Yeah, thank you very much. I just answered this question that this is a normal temporary uh, phenomena because the sales were uh, the bulk of the private sector sales happened towards the end of the quarter. So the normal payment term cycle uh, gets triggered, and uh, at the particular point of time, the receivables became higher. But then they start getting normalized uh, as the payments start getting due. 
got it and uh, and then secondly uh, on on the uh, on the passenger rail uh, business when, when do you really expect margin to start improving to you know your on the passenger side, our average, uh, the blended margin should be able to normalize when we reach uh, uh, normal levels of volume, which is between 15 to 20 cars per month, uh, which we are expecting to achieve by the middle of next financial year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shirom Kapoor from Prabhudas Niladar. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. I was having some network issues earlier. Am I audible now? Yes, sir, you are. Great. And, uh, you know, pardon me if, I have, if there's any repetition as my call dropped off. So basically, in your um, investor presentation, you have highlighted a 50 to 70,000 crore uh, opportunity size in metros. Is this purely for rolling stock? Yeah, I will, uh, I will request at least to... Yeah, this is for the metro roll stock, yeah. Okay, and what is, you know, typically, um, over, over how many years are we expecting this sort of uh, opportunity size to, you know, how many these tenders to come out and what is, uh, you know, Titaga's typical uh, win rate or market share in metros? You know, how much can we typically expect uh, Titaga to win out of this entire uh, opportunity size? So as far as uh, the timing for this uh, this uh, business to materialize is concerned, it is a lot dependent upon the execution of the metro project. But uh, this is based on public data that is available, uh, which we have quoted, and we believe that uh, this should happen. Uh, this should uh, uh, get executed over the next between five and seven years or something of that nature. In terms of our own market share, we are a new entrant in the market, and uh, we have been continuously and steadily uh, establishing, establishing ourselves. We believe that, uh, you know, we will be a very strong competitor, contender for uh, larger market share because of the capacity build-up that we are doing and the backward integration that we are doing, which will make us the only Indian company which will have both a, com a complete end-to-end -end design to manufacture to service facility for uh, comprehensively aluminium and stainless steel metros with their own propulsion. So that will give us a huge competitive advantage and that is the whole basis on which we are strategizing our investments and our positioning in the market. Uh, we believe that uh, the Indian market, uh, uh, we can offer the best, uh, most competitive product and therefore gain substantive market share. Uh, understood. That's very helpful, sir. Uh, and moving on to now the Vande Bharat opportunity. So I understand, you know, you've already received a tender to make 80 uh, cars for the 200 uh, out of the 200 uh, uh, train tender. Um, you know, going forward, uh, there's a plan for the government to have 800 Vande Bharat trains by 2030. And I believe, you know, 400 have already been tendered out, including uh, initially plus your 200 and another 100 aluminum trains. And so in the remaining 400, will Titaga be, uh, you know, participating in all those tenders, including the aluminum trains? And, you know, what is the opportunity size um, still available to Titaga in Bande Bharat? So we believe that the uh, aspirations of the new India is very clear that, uh, uh, you know, gone are those days wherein uh, India was satisfied with the old uh, uh, kind of antiquated uh, train system or travel system. So we believe that this opportunity is not going to stop with 400 or 800 trains. There are uh, uh, the population of India uh, would uh, demand better trains the, at the like of Vande Bharat. And as far as Titagar's position is concerned, uh, as I just mentioned for Metro, the same applies for Vande Bharat. Uh, we we are establishing ourselves, uh, and I mentioned in my opening remarks that we will be uh, in due course in a few couple of months, maybe uh, coming out with our design uh, that we are conceptualizing for uh, the Vande Bharat. And the, the country would see that uh, the kind of... Uh, future of train travel that uh, our Vande Bharat will offer. Understood, sir. And, you know, do you have any kind of uh, value that you could assign to 
you know, even typically what the cost of one train would be. Um, and, you know, even for the future ones, given that they're going to be more modern and there's going to be sleeper versions. So if you could give an estimate of what, you know, a per train cost or opportunity size for uh, the government. It is, uh, it is in public domain that a train is between 130 to 140 crore, depending upon whether it is a stainless steel or an aluminium train. And, uh, you know, going forward, I think uh, uh, the, the benchmark is already set, so it is going to be uh, derived, the uh, pricing is going to be derived from here. Understood. So thank you so much and all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. The next question is from the line of uh, Srinidhi from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the follow-up opportunity. Uh, Mr. I, uh, in this contract that the company had won for 24,000 wagons uh, back in May 22, uh, that, that contract had this uh, option clause giving railway rights to procure 30% additional wagons at same pricing with uh, with same price variation clause. Wondering uh, how often does railway exercises this uh, quantity option contracts? Uh, since there is no obligation on the railways to exercise this uh, option clause, this is as the word suggests an option of the railways. But uh, in the past, we have seen more often uh, than not uh, the option clause getting uh, exercise and, uh, uh, you know, because the railway's demands do not slow down. So we believe that the option clause is something uh, that we have seen in the last several years uh, in most of the contracts have gotten exercise. So we need to right. wait and watch uh, to see what the railway does with the current contract. And does, does similar contracts are there in Vande Bharat contract as well, or these are typically wagon contracts, which has these oh, option contracts? Option clauses are there in the Vande Bharat as well. Right. And last one, sir, if I may, uh, a few of the investors had this um, uh, query relating the uh, how is company, uh, like the Vande Bharat contract is a consortium contract, and how are the partners uh, basically protected from the possible execution challenges or failure from other partners. So are there terms in the contract which protect um, Thetagar in both supply as well as O&M from the possible uh, challenges from the partner execution? Absolutely. Uh, it's a, a very interesting question. And yes, uh, the consortium agreement between us and uh, our consortium partner adequately addresses uh, such eventualities wherein uh, the failure or potential failure or delay by one partner does not uh, impediment the capability of the other partner to move forward and perform. Uh, consortiums are uh, very common in this industry globally and uh, over a period of time consortium arrangements have matured uh, and consortium agreements have matured to an extent that uh, most of the risks that are foreseeable are mitigated to the best possible extent. Right. So good to hear, sir. Uh, congratulations and uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Indrajit Chakravarti from Script Trading Corporation. Please go ahead. Uh, Namaskar, Mr. Chaudhary and your team. Uh, congratulations on a great set of numbers. I need a small clarification regarding the size of the upcoming wagon tender from Indian Railways, which is being spoken about. Is it for 20,000 wagons or is it for 50,000 wagons? If you might please clarify. Thank you. Thank you. 
thousand have already been captured, and this is only for one single type of wagon. So uh, we are uh, hoping and waiting for the railways to come out with a tender for the others. And 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 if I may add one more question, a small thing, which is this Vande Bharat trains which you are making uh, right now. Uh, that is for sleeper coaches or just uh, you know just uh, just chair car kind of things. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes. Sir, you were not audible in between. I'm saying the Vande Bharat that we are making are sleeper trains. These are sleeper coaches. Thank you very much for your clarification. Thank you, sir. Best of luck. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raja Mohan V, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on another solid performance. Uh, my first question was of the passenger rolling stock order book of uh, 13,870 crores. What would be the metro component? And uh, what would be the exec execution timelines? Would it be, say, two, three years kinds? So out of the order book that we have for the uh, passenger rail system, sir, the bulk is of the Vande Bharat. And uh, metro component is, as we mentioned, we have now three projects after Pune, from Bangalore, which is a subcontracting project. Uh, then we have Surat and Ahmedabad. There are, of course, new uh, opportunities that are in the pipeline and we will be participating in uh, trying to back them. Uh, the, the current orders that we have have on an average about a three, three and a half year kind of a delivery schedule. Uh, so these will be executed in the next three, three and a half years time. Right. So roughly would Metro be about uh, 2,000 to 2,500 odd crores? If you add it, all the orders. It would be, let's say, out of the total business uh, volume, it would be about 15%. Uh, yeah, approximately Fine. 15% Fine. should be around that much. Fine. Further, with the significant ramp up from, say, 5, 6 coaches to 70 coaches that you envisage in the next three years, uh, can you roughly give a roadmap on average monthly coaches that one can see being delivered in FI24, FI25, and FI26, as per your internal estimates? So we would only be able to give you the milestone that we have uh, uh, disclosed, uh, which uh, uh, we have shared in public domain, which is uh, the important milestone, which is uh, we will be able to reach our first targeted capacity of between 15 to 20 coaches by the end of next fiscal. Uh, by the sorry, middle of next fiscal, and uh, we should be able to reach the full capacity in about three, three and a half years' time. Fine. One final question on uh, freight rolling stock. You have, guided, you have uh, uh, famously guided to reaching 1,000 uh, production capacity by this year end. Uh, would it mean we would have average dispatches of, say, around 800 for the current year, what with we reaching 759 in September? And extending this further to FI25, would we then be easily achieving average 1,000 or more dispatches for FI25? So, the, uh, as, as I mentioned a uh, uh, little while ago, we are now at about between 600 to 700. I think uh, a one-month dispatch figure should not be taken as a, uh, as a very kind of uh, gospel benchmark. Uh, right now, we are at an average of six to 700 wagons. Uh, we intend to slowly wrap this up to 1,000 wagons, which we will be able to reach by the end of the year. So yes, as far as the next year is concerned, uh, we will target to be at around, say, 1,000, maybe 10%, 5% here or there, uh, average run rate uh, in the years to come. So the next year could see a significant, say, 50 percent kind of uh, uh, volume growth at least in uh, freight rolling stock. That's right. So, uh, I'm very right. sorry to Fine. Thank you, Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you and best wishes. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Mr. Pankaj from Affluent Assets. Please go ahead. Thanks a lot for taking my question and congrats for very good set of numbers. 
Sir, in answer to one of the uh, questions earlier, you mentioned that uh, the cost of making a uh, Vande Bharat train would be anywhere between 130 to 140 crores, depending on the material used. So, and we we have quoted accordingly, if I am not wrong, in the bid. But uh, when we were uh, when when the bids were opened and when we backed the order. We had to match the uh, price set by the first uh, L1 bidder. So, do you mean to say that in this contract, the con contract for 80 uh, trains, we would be making losses or maybe minimal profit just uh, so that we can uh, uh, make a. Or, or, or are we very aggressive? Where we are, are we very aggressive? in participating in this contract? Uh, we have already, uh, uh, in the last, uh, maybe the last or last before call, we had uh, explained this in detail, but I'll just briefly sum it up for you. Uh, as the uh, end of a Vande Bharat is concerned, uh, we were L2 in our bid, and uh, of course the L1 was an aggressive price. Uh, the same similar Vande Bharat are being produced by the railways and the benchmark pricing is uh, lesser than the price that has been offered to us. Uh, uh, so, uh, in a nutshell, we expect that we will be, we are confident of being able to maintain our margin of around 10% for the train. For the service, the margin should be better. Uh, there is, of course, you know, this is a very large tender and uh, one of the larger ones in the world. So we will be able to have a substantive uh, procurement power and uh, considering the volume, 1,280 coaches is a very large volume. So considering the volume, we have done our homework and uh, with the right make and buy decisions, we will uh, definitely end up with about a uh, ballpark of 10% of uh, every town this business as well. Sure. Uh, secondly, uh, Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Pankaj. Uh, could you rejoin the sure. question queue again for follow-up questions? Sure, sure. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we are taking the last question for this session from the line of Mr. Priyesh Babaria from the company Max Life Insurance. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for the good set of numbers. So, sir, a couple of questions from my side. Uh, first, on a freight rolling stock, uh, especially on export side, when government had announced uh, India, Middle East, uh, uh, European uh, corridor, so we, we thought that we finally see that uh, we will export the uh, large number of wagons to these countries or we'll export from the India itself. So. So after uh, uh, erupting the uh, Israel war, so where do you see uh, the exports actually going ahead, and where we will see the export export traction? We will see kind of a meaning in an, in a meaningful way uh, to those countries where we are we are not funding uh, uh, from the country perspective. See, that's a very uh, thank you very much, sir. But uh, uh, you know that's a very macro uh, geopolitical. Uh, kind of a question which is very difficult to be answered at this point of time. Uh, I do believe that uh, the regional conflicts will not, uh, for a very long period of time, uh, upset global alliances. We have seen that last year uh, in other parts of the world uh, where uh, the regional conflicts have uh, kind of uh, precipitated for much longer than uh, desired or expected, but uh, that has not uh, stopped or uh, deterred the world uh, from coming together or uh, to continue with the economic developments by way of global alliances. So in terms of, uh, you know, whether it is a corridor that is being planned or in terms of uh, alliances for funding and exports, etc., we do not uh, see that there will be a long-term uh, disturbance or uh, uh, value disruption or uh, kind of value proposition disruption on those. In terms of export market for wagons is concerned, uh, as I had, uh, also mentioned that 
you know there is a limited niche market for wagon there is a larger market for wagon components because of the sheer logistics cost of wagon uh, being uh, shipped out uh, the volume being the same for a commodity which or uh, of a product which costs about 40 lakhs on an average compared to a, a coach which costs about 10 crores it does not make too much of an economic uh, justification for long distance uh, cross border export or uh, supply of wagons uh, there are uh, niche business opportunities that come but they are more localized in nature sure sir thank you uh, my second question is regarding the propulsion mr priyesh um thank you so much for the question uh, due to shortage of time we will be ending the call here so i would like sure. to hand over the conference over to mr dhirendra tiwari for the closing comments sure thank you uh, and we have a venti stock booking i thank uh, the the management team of titagar rail systems uh, for giving us the opportunity to host the call uh, i also thank all the participants before i close uh, would you like to say any closing remarks mr ji then we can close uh no thank you dhirendra ji and thank you for organizing such a vibrant call uh, was uh, very uh, uh, interesting to uh, interact with all the participants uh, and uh, we hope uh, to keep in touch uh, post our next earnings call uh, after december and thank you everybody for your good wishes your continuous support uh with, with which is very important for the company and we believe that the company is uh, in a very interesting position wherein uh, while on the passenger on the freight rolling stock uh, you know we have already kind of uh, stabilized or traveled the journey to a large extent uh but on the passenger side we are still as a, i mentioned in the opening remarks we have a long runway and then we have a long uh, flight ahead of us so we are very excited uh, very committed uh, towards this uh, journey and uh, we hope uh, we will uh, have a successful uh, and a very fruitful uh, road ahead thank you very much thank you sir and uh, thank you all the participants now we can close the call thank you sir on behalf of antique stock broking that concludes this conference Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.